What a week we have ahead of us. This is the astrology report for the 26th of February to March the 3rd. We have one of the most lucky and fortunate transits in the sky that happens only twice a year. We're going to talk about how that impacts you at the end of this week. Really want you to listen to this luck, opportunity, and wealth energy of this particular sky for your sun sign, moon sign, and of course your rising sign. We also have a kind of might makes right and a kind of a self-righteous start to the beginning of the week where we all have to watch that we don't think we know what's best for everyone else besides ourselves. So we'll talk about how Monday and Tuesday you want to watch for those little bit of a treacherous area of the sky. We'll talk a bit about, of course, what might be going on in the world regarding these transits because we have a lot about the world that we want to figure out with all of the things that are happening in our news cycles. Um, that's called Mundane Astrology. Don't worry, we do your sign as well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lori Lothian and I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac and Whole Sign Houses. I'm here to help you time your best life by using astrology as a navigational tool. If you want to join my Sky Reader class, it's coming up in April, six weeks of learning for you to actually figure out how to time your best life using astrology, then please go ahead and sign up on the wait list in the description box below. So when I open the doors for tuition in the maybe third week of March with early bird discounts and all of that, you are aware of the class when to enroll before it is full. It will fill up. So let's talk about the sky. First of all, I just put out a video. I'm recording this for my Patreon community on February 23rd, um, which is a Friday. I just put out a video today about uh, Mercury's transit through Pisces. Go take a listen to that um, because I'm pretty well sure that because I talk a lot about the world events, it's kind of trending crappy in the algorithm. And that's because it's not really about you, just all about you, my listener. It's about things that are happening in the sky for the world. Um, so this one's going to be a little bit more about you just to be safe. And what I want to say is that you, there's a very sweet bit of luck this week in the sky. It's so juicy and it has a couple of flavors to it that are very rare. And that's going to be a Jupiter and Sun com combination called a sextile. It's going to happen on the weekend. You'll start to feel it, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it's really building up and really kind of peaking out on the weekend. And what I really like about this, and I'm going to show you a picture of the sky, is that Un, un, unlike other Jupiter sextile sun or sun sextile Jupiter, which is flow, harmony, ease, and luck energy, this particular one is connected to a Jupiter co-present with Uranus in the sign of Taurus. And indeed, that Jupiter is getting ready to co-join with Uranus on April 21st. And therefore, there's an electric charge, something very exciting, something very um, uh, like uh, exhilarating about the way the Jupiter and the sun can, can, break, can bring together something positive for all of us as the weekend approaches, and hopefully for the world as well. Um, I'm going to give you some words that I wrote down, to sort of my own cheat sheet, because I love to keep myself on target. When I put these two planets together, Jupiter and the sun, we see things like optimism and self-confidence, luck, happiness, good fortune, generosity, magnanimousness. We feel like we're in touch with the good father. The universe is rewarding us. I like to sometimes call this the fairy godfather transit as well. So the, uh, if we do call it fairy godfather in the in the title of the video, which I just might, keep in mind that it's not like you get everything you want, you know, all your wishes on a platter, but it does bring you into touch with the essence of goodness, and, and wisdom and knowledge as Jupiter and, and generosity and expansion and growth and sun, the solar energy at the core of your being and a place where you may also be seeing a professional or career advancements as well. Now, the keywords aside, and I say one more thing about it, like on a very practical note, it's good for educational opportunities, educational stories, councils, or general councils of meetings. You know, if you put Jupiter and the sun together, it could be the high council. So um, it could also be the high court, the high council. So those sorts of stories with positive spins Friday, Thursday, Friday into the weekend are very likely for the world. Um, social groups and socialization with larger groups of people, especially if it's more professional, can be very advantageous for you uh, at the end of this week as well. Now, it is a good fortune and it can bring wealth energy as well. It depends on your chart. When we listen for your sun, moon and rising, I want you to think of your rising as the most accurate. Your sun can be about career and purpose or father or father figures in your life. The moon about your body, your home, your nest, safety needs, your emotions, and um, your home, yeah, your home and nest. So, but if you're listening for your rising sign, you're listening for the most um, pure delineation of your character in this game of life. 
Now, one of the things I want to mention in about the synodic cycle of Jupiter and the Sun is the synodic cycle of Jupiter and the Sun. There's a tendency in a lot of uh, YouTube astrology, and I'm not judging or criticizing people, to just talk about a transit that's happening in the sky. Like, oh, whoa, the Sun is coming into a sextile to Jupiter. Whoa, that's going to be like such a good day or a good week or whatever. And so that really is not how you should look at it. Yes, the Sun is moving through Pisces and will flow to Jupiter. Yes, the Sun is moving through the domain or domain domicile or house that belongs to Pisces, the sign, right? The sign that is the Pisces real estate that belongs to Jupiter. That gives basically the sun a desire to please Jupiter. But the sun in a sextile to Jupiter is the very tail end, the finish line, the marathon endpoint of what is going to complete on May the 18th, 2024. But what came into being, which is where it really matters, on April the 11th, 2023. I want you to go back to April the 11th, 2023, or you can categorically say April of 2023. And what occurred at that time was the sun who joined Jupiter. It was dying in the heart of the sun, being born again, getting a mission instruction from God, the sun, the divine intelligence, the one, you know, and as he went out of the sun, he began to navigate around the 12 signs of the zodiac from his starting point, like a, like a marathon race um, in April 11th, 2023. And then he's gone around the whole of the, the zodiac and done things like sextiles and squares and trines and oppositions. He's done all these angles to planets as he's gone through the story, including the angles to the sun. Now, from that conjunction of the Sun and Jupiter in April of 23, he's at the very tail end of that story. A sextile is a very lucky, flowing, easy relationship that brings auspicious acts of grace and goodness. We like that finish line for sure. And he's going to park his ass back on the Sun on May the 28th, 2024, and start a new story in the Taurus region of everybody's life that lasts a year. Jupiter is moving through the sky, one sign every 12 years. And so this means that what we're experiencing right now, this is a Taurus Jupiter narrative we have not seen since 12 years ago. It is therefore useful to go back to your life around 12 years ago and see if you can compare notes because the luck, the grace, and the opportunity we're experiencing here is happening both in your Aries part of your real estate, of your natal sky, and at this point in time, right now, this week, also connected to and in the place that the sun sits, which is your Pisces part of your sky. So we're going to talk about that for your sign. But it's something that was seeded as a good new beginning, a good new start, a good reset mission for lucky Lord Jupiter of prosperity, abundance, expansion, growth, children, wisdom, knowledge, fairness. That story began in April last year in your Aries part of your whole sign house sky. Use whole si sign houses, make it simple on yourself. Don't know how to cast your chart in whole sign houses, the ancient house system. Please check my description box below. So this video, we're going to dive into the all signs story of the synodic cycle of the sun connecting in the sky with a flow to Jupiter, but as, as well reminding ourselves that this started in April with the Sun-Jupiter conjunction in Aries, is closing out with the Sun-Jupiter conjunction in Taurus. So this is really an Aries story, right? The new Taurus story starts at the end of May. If you want to get an idea of other times that these things have happened, there was a sextile, a flowing relationship, like we're talking today, between the Sun and Jupiter on July the 1st. 2023. That was the sun in the sign of um, the sign of Cancer. And on July 1st last year, flowing to Jupiter and Taurus, because Jupiter was in Taurus then as well. There's only two a year, basically. All right. Because when we get to August 7th of 2024, the sun will be in Leo sextiling Jupiter. And we get to April the 6th of 2025, the sun will be in Aries sextiling Jupiter on its route around the zodiac.
to finish up a story that's a one-year narrative about an initiation in the sign of Taurus. I hope that is understandable by you guys. I hope that doesn't confuse you. Um, this synodic cycle reset, if you want to listen right now, if you want to get the gist for your sign, say you were going to talk about your sun, moon, or rising, back in January of 2021, sun, Jupiter co-joined in Aquarius. That put Aquarius' on button, okay, on buttons for Aquarius until March the 5th, 22, when the sun joined together with the sun toward together with Jupiter in the sign of Pisces. That was March 5th, 2022. Pisces, you had the on button with Jupiter and the sun synodic cycle. And finally, here we are, April 11th, 2023, sun, Jupiter co-joining and Aries giving way to the Tauruses get the next on button at the end of the month of May. Now, I have an Aries sun and moon. I've enjoyed this synodic cycle tremendously from the Aries reset last year for prosperity, wealth, abundance, growth, expansion, and luck, because this reset button for me in Aries activated my house of social media platforms and websites, writing, communicating, and blogging, and anything to do with my business as my business is an online communicating news kind of report. And that's my third house, my Aries third house as an Aquarius rising. So I saw how the reset button blossomed out my channel here with you guys. And so think for your last year's Aries out of year, you're coming to a finish line, a, a auspicious, lucky close. <laughs> all right, I'm going to open up the sky and show you what's happening. And then we're going to go ahead and do the all signs. All righty. I, I decided to wear a cool dress. Thank you to all my regulars. And if you're new, my new cool dress. Thank you to all my regulars. And if you're new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications uh, so that you don't miss a thing. I put out 30 to 40 videos every month, and I do live premieres where I talk with you in the actual watching of the video in the live chat while this recording plays. And this recording will be coming out on Monday. I put out a weekly Monday. We'll look ahead at the astrology, and I always use the all science format. So if you want to know how to personalize astrology, at least under the general bell curve, right, of your sun or moon or rising sign, this is not a personal reading, um, please try my channel out and help me um, do this job that I love. Because <laughs> when you like that like button, the algorithm likes me, and then I get to like you all back. <laughs> I hope that is a good explanation. Okay, so I'm going to now move over to what is the chart. And I'm going to share the screen. Uh, here we go. Am I still recording, having one of those moments? Recording? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the sky, just a picture of the sky. That's a Pisces rising on the left. And I've got it set for March 1st because that's when the sun here comes into the most tight conjunction, or I mean sextile to Jupiter here. So hopefully that's obvious to you. I'm sorry, I don't know if I need to annotate that, but let me give it a shot anyway. Um, annotating. Now, here we go. Jupiter co-present with Uranus. Right, the sun just sitting over here, coming out of a triple Kazemi, which very rare uh, in the heart of the sun. Um, so the sun has been rebirthing planets, right? Um, so the sun has let Saturn be reborn as a morning star planet. Saturn is going to be visible in April when he becomes out, outside the beams of the sun. So sun Mercury conjunction as well as Mercury is being born again, as well as an evening star. So the sun has been giving birth basically to two planets and that already happened uh, by the time you listen. No, it's coming up on the 28th this week. I'm not gonna dive into the triple rare triple Kazemi rebirth of those planets in this video because on Sunday, the day before this video is on your doorstep, I came up with my rare triple Kazemi video. I'm also doing a Mar Saturn becoming an old man in the heart of the sun separate video coming out also probably on Wednesday of this week, which would be the 28th. So you might wanna watch for that. I also have a Mercury webinar if you wanna catch it. Um, it's about the Merc rare Mercury Kazemi co-joined with Saturn and the webinar will be taught on Monday the 26th. So you might be able to grab a spot before uh, the, this evening if you're listening to this, oh, if you're listening to this video today on Monday. Um, alrighty, and let's get talking one more thing that's going on this week. At the very beginning of the week, there's an intense energy between Mars, the warrior, and the champion, and the hero, in a very challenging conversation with Jupiter. Now, that conversation is happening Monday and Tuesday, all right? That's not the easy part. That's the right makes might. From the amazing book, The Archetypal Universe by Ren Butler, I will read one of my favorite quotes by him in terms of the darker or shadow side of this, okay? There's so many good quotes, but... Um, 
He uses one uh, quote, which is the game is afoot by uh, M.A. Dowell and then um, A.C. Dowell, D Doyle, A.C. Doyle. That's a Sherlock Holmes author. But he also has this one. He was like a cock. Like, I mean, as in a rooster, he was like a cock who thought the sun had risen just to hear him crow. That was George Eliot, who had a Mars opposite Jupiter, which is a difficult, um, very difficult anger, um, difficult uh, relationship angle. Um, and there's another quote from George Eliot, thunderous moral power. I love that thunderous moral power. Mars is like righteous and self-righteous when he's talking to Jupiter in a hard angle. So where are we going to see something in our world and in our lives where we think we have thunderous moral power on Monday and Tuesday? That's the warning, right? Be careful that you don't deliver thunderous, self-righteous moral power at your wife, your husband, your kids, your best friend. Be careful of right makes might energies at this time. Um and then in his longer write-up about this, he says things such as stridency, obnoxious theatrics, big shot inflation, competitive spirit, um, self-aggrandizement, self-glorification. You know, so these are darker ar archetypes for sure. Um, he also says the ideals of nationalism and expansionism, a might makes right philosophy, urges to side with the strong, the spoils of war, history written by the victors, aristocratic and genteel violence. Quote, the English country gentleman galloping after a fox, the unspeakable in full pursuit of the uneatable by Wilde, by Wilde, Oscar Wilde, I suppose. Um, I like this one. The English country gentleman galloping after a fox, the unspeakable in full pursuit of the uneatable. <laughs> All righty. Whew. So, you know, in the world today, I'm not going to go too much into this. I'm going to just take this off for a sec so I can start without the, the writing on there. I don't want to belabor this political part of the mundane astrology, but with this right makes my thunderous moral action or aggression and some of what I just read. There is a potential for that to be quite the calamitous time because with Mercury sitting here as well in the part of the sky where Jupiter is sitting, there is quite, I mean, Jupiter sitting where the sun is still sitting. Mercury rules, rules news stories, right? Because it's in the sign of water, Pisces, and because Saturn is also in the mix with asteroid gong gong, hardship at water, and right makes right and thunderous moral, moral action or whatever, self-righteous action then I, my concern would be some kind of deliverance of or difficult news stories Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, really, about hardship at water that's quite challenging. But because we have that moral justice energy with Jupiter, I, rather than it maybe all, be all about like a tsunami or a tidal wave or some a difficult water story from Mother Nature, my concern would be, of course, some kind of war action based on that principle of righteous self-righteous moral thunderous actions and and that would not look good that would look like something going on let's say in the red sea for example that is quite alarming that would be one way of seeing it so let's move into the happy story of your sign coming into this end point of a synodic cycle of jupiter that started last april closing out at the end of the may this is your finish line it's your lucky finish line stretch home stretch energy um small note on Sunday, Venus will come into a square to Uranus. That's a lucky, that surprises in money and love. But I'm going to really embed that story in next week's video because even though it's directly happening on Sunday, we're going to be feeling that square as well into Monday as and Tuesday of next week. But just know on Sunday, you may expect have some unexpected surprises popping up. Um, like, whoo, I can't believe it. You know, money and love surprises. Uh, Uranus is in Taurus with Jupiter. And of course, Venus is in a difficult aspect or a square, and uh, the square energy can be surprising because of the Uranus part, but it's not always a bad thing. Venus will still be in Aquarius with Pluto, right, and Mars, and so there's a lot of heat in that part of your Aquarius sky, squaring Jupiter in your um, Taurus part of your sky. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do the all signs. And uh, this is being recorded, as I said, Friday, February 23rd for my Patreon community who gets this early access ad-free content. And that means that they don't get ads, they get to see this before you. It's all uploaded into Patreon in our private community. I'm, I'm kind of ethically bribing you to try me out. So for trying me out for $5, you get at the lowest tier early access ad-free content. You get my... Um, you get my once a meeting, once a month meeting 
uh, for all tiers and we talk astrology and they're often quite intimate, like six or seven people show up. So if you want to get to know me, it's a great idea. Even though I have 300 people there, not everyone can make those meetings. There are replays. And then you also have two free courses, a Chiron, the key to purpose, and are you my person synastry class? I've taught those classes already. These are the replays on the market for resale at uh, $33 each. So you're going to get a $66 gift, <laughs> Deathical bribe, just for trying me out and seeing if you like the Patreon story, what I'm doing over there. Oh, uh, did I forget anything? No, let's get rolling. And then let me get the uh, chart back up for us. Okay, here we are. Let's start with Aries and then we'll move forward. So Aries, sun, moon, and especially rising sign, what we're having on the sky story for you this week um, is don't forget not to do a right makes my moral righteous uh, tirade hissy fit at someone or something in your life on this Monday and Tuesday, where this looks a little bit like it could be a problem area. It could be a, di a very difficult disagreement or clash, for instance, with a sibling younger or older with a friend in your larger social networks and friendship groups. That is something to be very cautious about or some kind of difficulty with um, a situation in your colleague and career space as well. And it could blow out over money and financial issues. So be just more cautious around those things on Monday and Tuesday. But then as we move forward and we get into the week and we, you know, don't forget Triple Kazemi on Wednesday. There's a whole video about that deep dive into that. Go watch that video. Um, I don't want to do the same content twice. But at the end of the week, we have this synodic uh, finish line of luck as now we see the sun here talking to Jupiter here, 11 and 11 degrees. And this is something that you have been feeling building up since April of 2021 when there was that conjunction on um, of the two planets on April 11th. This is now coming to a close. So I'd say, hey, you are Aries. It is about you, right? It's all about you. You reset. You had the once every 12 years, yay, yippity doo da me reset button. And you're, do you're done. You reset this. And you know what? I'm going to tell you when this last happened. I'm going to tell every sign when this last happened, because it's really good to go back in time and compare the 12 years ago story. So I'm just going to grab the last time. So I, I don't, I don't remember what it was. I'm going to go double check my notes. So let's get it back into the story. I've got my dates handy. So the last time we saw the sun come together in Aries, so if we're comparing this to April of 23, Aries folks, uh, last time we saw the sun come together here was in April of 2011. And so you go back to April of 2011 and you add a year, and that's the cycle that you're repeating now since last April. What kind of lucky, expansive things happened for you in your Aries house, which is all about you. If it's your sun, it's about your career and career path. If it's your moon, about your home, nest, and safety. And if it's your Aries rising, it's all about you. This also happened in 1999, 1987, 1975, right? In the springtime. So you've got to keep going back, back, back in time. Um, I'll use me as an example, Aries sun and moon. In April of 2011, I got a job that I really wanted in the at a magazine online called Elephant Journal as a love and relationships editor. And what does that mean for me? Well, because um, I'm an Aries son, but it's a career in my third house of periodicals and magazines. And then that escalated to other senior editor jobs in various magazines online. So for you, I want you to think about how you did something really positive and lucky and expansive when you were in April of 2011 to April of 2012. All right, and you won't get this again until 2035. So it can look like something very lucky for you personally, if it's your Aries rising, like, you know, a lucky break in, in your health, a lucky development regarding your body, a lucky experience regarding, um, you know, you just feeling grandiosely lucky especially with that Chiron transit through Aries. Let's face it, you guys have been dealing with a lot of identity crisis issues. And uh, ever since 2018, 19, really coming to terms with a, a quest for a deeper sense of true self and purpose in life, meaning of life. And uh, that's being healed right now in fe the February conjunction to the North Node. And with all that said, here we have this synodic cycle kicking up a storm. The sun is really saying, I would like to bring you a complete happy finish line around all of the challenges of and the glory and the goodness of 
the lucky breaks that you've had from the fairy godfather. Let's keep using the fairy godfather in the last year in the house of your identity. And by the way, let's finish strong in the 12th house of foreigners, foreign lands, foreign shores, uh, the, the cessation and the healing of addictions and self undoings, things to do with money and earnings and income, especially here, especially with Venus coming into a square to Uranus on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, next week, this definitely can look like holy man, some kind of financial abundance picking up steam in an unexpected way. But what we're seeing before that, as we look at this uh, weekend ahead um, into Friday through Sunday, maybe I'll say Thursday, you'll start to feel it building sun sextiles, Jupiter, uh, Friday, 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 Thursday through Sunday. I'm going to say it could look like some kind of uh, favors from backroom deals and negotiations that inf influences your money, lucky money developments from people from far off foreign places, or some a, a happy money stories developing here at the end of the week through borderless income and long distance international um, money making endeavors, basically. So enjoy the ride for you, Aries. It looks super positive. The story comes to an end on the 28th of May, and you reset a new story in your with Jupiter's help in your second house of earnings. It's going to be a really fun ride for the next year oh, with that Jupiter-Sun conjunction, giving you a year of fairy godfather stories in your second house of earnings. Hey, Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. What goes on here um, is that you're looking at a very interesting beginning of the week where I want you to be careful not to be a self-righteous a-hole where you're, you're, you're pointing your sharp Martian sword or somebody's porting a, mar sharp, mar a sharp Martian sword in the 10th house of career. And it's something like it could be a moral righteousness blowout with a colleague, coworker, boss, or something in your visible reputation space. Very much could look like you, Jupiter, very big and larger than life, almost trying to defend yourself like righteously against some kind of onslaught of reputation, slander, or difficulty, or career uh career aggression against you. Now, um, it's also with Pluto up there, even more intense. But this sort of self-righteous energy is just something to be cautious of. <clears throat> you may not be the one delivering it. Somebody else may. I mean, so if someone's morally, self-righteously, thunderously moral at you, you have to hold the ground here with the wisdom that Jupiter gives you on Monday and Tuesday. It's not your problem to, uh, you know, fix their misperception. Let's put it that way. Not your job to fix their misperceptions, should there be a misperception of you or your situation in a career and reputation space. Now, as the week goes on, we have the Kazemi on Wednesday, the rare triple Kazemi of the uh, sun with Saturn and Mercury. Do watch the video that came out yesterday on Sunday, probably on Sunday for that. I think you would be benefiting greatly. It might come out on Saturday, but it will already be out. Now, um, go back to April of last year. I mean, technically it was April the 11th, but it doesn't really matter. April of 2023. Perry Godfather reset button happened here with the sun conjunct, right, Jupiter in Aries. First time you've seen this is 2011 April and before that April of 1999. Each of these times, it's a new beginning, a new reset. It also happened in, in March of 1987. All right. And back before that, in March of 1975. So this is a repeating fairy godfather cycle. But this time, and it's in April, it began April of last year. And it's now finishing on the finish line of luck and opportunity and flow and ease and grace. Aries is your 12th house where this started last year. And this is what the story is for. It's for perhaps something to do with your addictions, your self undoing, your bad habits, your escapist tendencies, your own self sabotage, and have you been working with healing that since last April? Have you have you been working with things to do with revenue you could generate from far off and foreign shores? Have you been working on deep soul work, your psyche, and the approach towards your life from a spiritual perspective? Have you been attempting to find a healer, guide, a therapist, or guru to guide you through the miasma and the maze of your own unconscious mind and your own deep psychological and mysterious past life stuff? Because this is kind of all the 12th house stuff, right? And as this, this energy of a fairy godfather reset was attempting to happen, it may have also brought your attention to far off foreign lands and shores, or maybe a desire to create revenue from far off shores and far off lands, especially with our modern day internet 
digital income payment processors and all of that. So we're finishing strong right now. This is coming to a close. And that's the closing act is a sextile, which is that nature of Venus brings luck. And that brings that sun moving this way in an applying sextile to Jupiter. And this applying sextile to Jupiter is to complete something that began a year ago in a very positive way about how the fairy godfather from the 12th is going to reward you at this time between this weekend, basically, and the end of May with some kind of positive developments in your house of great gains from your career. You are lucky. You have Jupiter trying to improve your health, your physical well-being, your magnanimous, generous, and king and queen of Mount Olympus vibe is on, especially with Jupiter going direct since May 31st and giving you a long strength finish line through from January, December 31st to January 24th, where this is you being lucky in a once every 12 year way. So I'm bringing that up because this is reminding you, you are lucky, you are blessed, you are expanding and growing and having good fortune. And it's really showing up for you. Really, you can see it. It's right there. It's right in your face this uh, Friday through Sunday. And this is a house of good spirit, which brings its own kind of fortunes. It can bring pennies from heaven, windfalls. You know, who doesn't want a windfall? Um, I wasn't doing this for everyone. Maybe I should start that. There is a wedge here where Juno is kind of getting in the mix and it can lead to really important positive breakthroughs as well, perhaps with agreements with your children or your romantic partner as well agreements and, and uh, devotional, like, I mean, you know, deter what do you call it? Commitment le levels, new commitment levels. Lastly, I'd say, you know, the 11th house is like sometimes quite capable of delivering new and more important, influential, helpful uh, friends who are like kind of like allies or benefactors, right? Or this could be a breakthrough with an elder sibling as well. But whatever it is, it's just luck upon luck because there's luck in the 11th house and it's luck in the house of you and luck in the fifth house of so children and romantic partners as well. So looking forward to seeing how that plays out for you. Let me know in the comments what kind of strong finish line fairy godfather energy happens here. I mean, it could potentially be a raise or a promotion could potentially be an uplift in your reputation and career space as well. All 11th house matters. Looking good Friday all the way through until Monday, but in a bigger context, reminding you this flows all the way through to the end of May. Now let's go for Gemini sun, moon and rising sign. The beginning of the week starts off with a, a potential for some self-righteous moral thunder to be cautious for the conflict that it can engender uh, with Mars in the house of courts, legal matters and popes and priests and religious fanaticism and in a square to Jupiter in your house of your soul work. And it looks like you could have a sort of a conflict here going on with a powerful figure of authority, perhaps with Pluto in some kind of setting. Like I'm honestly, I've seen the ninth house look like a human resources area of the chart. So the human resources department of your company, you work for some moral thunder coming at you, um, some moral thunder coming from somebody that you look up to as a spiritual figure, uh, some moral thunder coming uh, out of a house of a third marriage partnership with some moral indignation and righteousness or moral thunder and sharp swords coming from sometimes with th th this place it can be somebody you're involved with from who lives in or from a foreign country or foreign shore and this is you in the soul workhouse kind of trying to reflect on how you wish to uh, be able to re relieve yourself of any self undoing and and self uh, defeating bad habits and addictions there's a Kazemi on Wednesday, but don't worry, watch the video I just put out for that. That's much more important for the all signs than I can cover here. That rare Kazemi of three planets and Mercury. Yeah, you got to watch it. So please, please do. And then we're going to move forward to the big story. Sun, sextiling Jupiter in a lucky, lucky finish line of a story that began on April of 2023 when Sun and Jupiter joined together. They joined together in Aries and they're completing now Sun, and Jupiter, the story that was started in your 11th house of good spirit. Now, the 11th house is a place of great career gains. It's also a place of expanding your local, your social networks and friends and having influence over others. And it's the place where you've been wounded as well. So it's kind of fascinating to see that the chironic wound is embedded in what it's asking to be very godfathered up here. 
in the next time while. I mean, we're talking about Friday through Sunday where this is very active, but then it also sort of flows out till the end of May for the next synodic cycle reset. It's helpful perhaps to go back to the following years in March, April, just think March, April of the following years, 1975, 1987, 1999, 2011. These are the times where as a Gemini sun, moon are rising, you experience the same reset button, the fairy godfather vibe clicking into your um, 11th house. So some of you may have found that you were not only healing friendship circles and groups of belonging, but you were also perhaps healing your long range goals and wishes, dreams and plans for your reality, for your career, for your life. And maybe because the 11th house can bring you a sense of uh, auspicious connection to siblings, especially an elder one, improving or being blessed in that relationship to that big brother or big sister. And one more thing I'd say is that you can get some financial windfall, sometimes like a, a feeling of being bountiful, like really lucky in your finances with a, an activation of the 11th house. So how has, especially money from your career, this is the, the great gains from one's career. And how has your career been blessed by this particular reset? My progressed son is in Gemini and I, and I have had a really great blessing in the last year in my career, which has gone crazy. And it's taken me to a whole new level of income and success that I've never had before in my life. So that kind of feeling blessed by the windfall or pennies from heaven has been a part of what me as a progressed Gemini son, career is your son, purpose is your son, I have experienced. Moon, it can be about home and home life. And as I said in the beginning intro, the ascendant degree is all about you. Hmm. Look for this little Friday to Sunday story to look like a peaking bit of success in your career, your reputation, and, in, and, and some developments around your reputation, including very newsy developments like proclamations about your success or you feeling like you want to shout to the high hills about your great successes. At the same time, it just can be like a new negotiation, a new development in the work that takes you up a notch, up a new level of success in your career, especially if it applies to foreign countries, foreign entities, and borderless income and revenue, or some backroom deals and negotiations that happen like Thursday, Friday through to the end of the weekend that really level you up in career and reputation matters in what feels like a fortunate and extremely lucky way. Now, this girl's going to stop the share. What weird lighting. And I'm going to get myself a bit of chocolate and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back in the game here. Chocolates to the rescue. And we're moving forward into the next piece of story for the sign of cancer. So <clears throat> moving forward. Moving into Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. What a week we have for you because you're going to start off with a little bombastic moral righteousness. Be cautious for some difficult situations with shared resources with another Monday and Tuesday. Maybe some arguing over taxes, some difficult um, bombastic ar archetypally rigid conversations or uh, challenges with uh, an elder sibling around financial matters or your main partner or with a friend. This is like really at quite the tussle here between your eighth house and your 11th. And an elder sibling could be having a disagreement with you and you with them. Uh, someone's got a moral righteous high ground, but Mars in the eighth house is very much about wanting to cut and send, se sever end things to do with financial stories that you may share money with another, including uh, your, your, your spouse. So watch your financial struggles Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, we're going to come into this en a nice energy or interesting energy of a triple Kazemi. Please check out my webinar for that. And that triple Kazemi is rare as all hell. And that's a Wednesday story. I have a video already out on that and you must listen to it for your sign. Please do. Um, so let's not redo the same wheel. But what I'm really excited about, really happy to talk about is Sun Jupiter coming into a finish line sextile uh, with the, this uh, week ahead, you know, Thursday through Sunday, let's just say broadly, is, is beginning to be felt by all of us. It's more exact on March the 1st. Go back to April of 2023. That's when this reset button of the Jupiter conjoining with the sun in Aries occurred. You also saw that reset button in the Aries real estate of your chart. Take notes, 2011, April, 1999, April, 1987, March, 1975, March, 
and from each of those reset buttons, there was a year that followed in which the fairy godfather archetypal reset button in your career house was quite active. You may have had very fortunate, interesting changes in your career and reputation space over the course of the 12 months that followed those reset buttons. Again, last seen April of 2011. Now you're coming into a period of time where it is back again. It's kind of signature is very different because of, of course, one of the reasons is Chiron in the 10th house here. Like, so 2018, 19, you've been trying to heal the Chironic wound of your true purpose and being in alignment with a meaningful purpose in career. And because that's been very active for you, this is also implying a special quality to how April of 23 to April of 24, you have managed to really been looking at some lucky uh, expansion, growth, optimism, and happiness in your career space, trying to unfold for you. This is a finish line of success in that career and reputation space being felt by you Thursday through Sunday from the sun in a flowing lucky sextile to Jupiter. Now, this will be a story, therefore, that even though it's happening this weekend, it may not completely wind down until around the 28th of May when Jupiter and um, the sun and Jupiter reconnect yet again and start a new cycle in Taurus. But it can look like on the weekend, nonetheless, some very lucky break going on here through an elder sibling or ally or benefactor or in a great financial gain from your career, connect it to ninth house matters. Now, that could be a professor, a judge, a book publishing uh, editor or agent. These are ninth house people. Or it can also be something more impressive like a deep a spiritual um authority figure like a saturn sun up there can be very much about the like the uh, the priest the pope the spiritual figure that you think is uh, traditionally reliable uh -huh, and you can rely on them so you know there's almost a sense here too because this is uh, even though it's all about the 10th house it's going to be that 11th and 9th that are activated and so you may have a lucky opportunity to teach or learn something coming through your radar friday through sunday that will enhance your purpose and enhance your career or a lucky opportunity or a golden uh, feeling of happy optimism around a trip you can plan with a friend or with an old older sibling that, or even a younger sibling, with Juno in the house of the younger sibling, coming through your sky Friday through Sunday. And this is also about your career, even though on the surface it doesn't look like it, because it's almost like the final, final reward for your hard work the final reward for something that you've achieved in the last year with the fairy godfather blessing in the 11th house. Now, Jupiter can bless you by also having things change and end, just not always expand and grow. So whatever happened here and has been happening here, uh, as you can look back over your shoulder since last April, might help you make sense of that transit. And I think I love the energy of Uranus here and Jupiter in his joy in your 11th house. This is an indication that this week's uh, Friday through Sunday has a special quality to it, a little bit of like a happy surprise. Um, and don't forget, you're getting that new reset in May. I can't wait to do a video about that in your 11th house. That's going to be a deep dive into the synodic cycle of uh, the year ahead and turning points. So ho hopefully you guys will be subscribed and watching that. So Leo, sun, moon, and rising. And hey, guys, if you're in the live premiere watching, anybody listening in there, don't forget to hit the like button and uh, support the channel and help me thrive uh, so that I keep producing this some fantastic content for you. Uh, she talks about her content as if she's a promoter. Yeah, this fantastic content. Leo, sun, moon, and rising sign. The synodic sign. Oh, the beginning of the... Watch out Monday and Tuesday for some kind of sharp, difficult, righteous, um, over-the-top, excessive conflict energy between a significant person in your life, like a, a, a monogamous relationship partner, a marriage partner, business partner, <clears throat> with a sword in his hand, her hand, his hand, its hand, and in a conflict around things that are going on with your work and career. And it's, a, it's an interesting one because really you're doing so well up here, Leos, because you're having expansion, growth, happiness, optimism, and luck all the way through to the end of May in your career. This started last May to some extent. And then Mars is someone objecting, you know, to this exp this expansion that you're going through. And you may feel like you're at odds with somebody else. It can be something simple, like you've got a great, great work opportunity ahead of you, you're going to take it. And your main partner is like, what about me? What about me? You know, I, I, I need some time with you or I spend some time with me. But it can end up like their conversation is that they've got the moral high ground and you're having to battle back uh, against it. On the Wednesday at the middle of the week, there is a Kazemi between the Sun and Mercury 
and Saturn, very rare. I have a whole video out on that. Please go watch for your sign and get the low down. The exciting story for me is the Sun-Jupiter combination that happens in a sextile, the fairy godfather aspect, bringing luck, grace, and ease to your life. When it comes to the area of the sky that's connected to your eighth house and your tenth house, this is Friday through Sunday, and it's really good for career and money stories. But before I detail that, I want you to remember, as I said in the beginning of the video, go back to the other beginnings of the cycle. This is the last finish line sextile of something that started last April, right? April 11th, 2023. Sun co-joined with, um, with Jupiter in Aries. And this is the end of that story happening this weekend. Finish line stuff through to the end of May when the new cycle begins. So get a pen, because I'm going to talk about what the meaning of the ninth house is, but get a pen. I want you to go back and jot down, you know, obviously April of 2023, April of 2011, April of 1999, April, March of 1987, and March of 1975. What was happening in those spring to spring, one year periods after these reset buttons of Jupiter? Because this is the area of the fairy godfather blessing again. It started last April. It closes out at the end of May, and it's in your ninth house of God. It flows to you. This could be father and father figures. This could be spiritual people. This could be guidance counselors. This could be uh, human resources people. This can be uh, coaches. These can be people who want to guide you because Kai runs up here, and he he wasn't here last time this happened in 2011. Um, it has a feeling up here of maybe coming to terms with or healing a spiritual faith, philosophy, ideal, or belief, as well as over the last year, maybe finding yourself lucky with opportunities for foreign shore travel, for land adventures, lucky in court and legal matters, and trying to like fight the good fight for justice in some area of legal legal and judgy stories. If you're a Leo in the in the publishing industry, then it would be good luck in that those stories as well. The ninth house can definitely look like your your you know priest, your pastor, your rabbi, and especially with Chiron up there. Even though you may be coming to terms with what you really believe is true, and also with your dharma, like what are you? On, why are you on planet Earth? Chiron is asking you. Uh, what's the meaning of your life? <laughs> and um, and with this lucky reset started last April and closes up at the end of May. Um, you'll find that things that happen this weekend, Friday through Sunday, really bring you back to the idea of that question and answer. What's the meaning of my life? And what's my spiritual faith? And what and what 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 gives my life meaning? And the story is being answered through a career and our area of success, right? But connected to the sun in the part of your sky that is the shared monies with your family of origin, like inheritance monies, that kind of stuff, legacy well, um, spousal shared resources, things to do with um, you know bank loans and mortgages and also things to do with stock investments. And somehow there's a tie in here just on you know Thursday through Sunday of some kind of lucky success in this area of that kind of money and the connection to your career. For instance, it could be a commission or a bonus or a performance bonus or a raise that really looks like good on your money story for sure, especially with Juno in, the, in a wedge in the house of uh, of making money that can look like a new agreement, a new contract, a new um, terms of service, and some kind of work, a story that is extremely positive in your financial area of your reality. Virgo, sun, moon, and rising sign here is a synodic cycle reset button. Oh, forget it. Let's start with the beginning of the week. Hi, <laughs> Virgo. Let's start with the hard stuff. Oh, watch out for the, the Mars square Jupiter energy happening. It's, it's like, ugh. It's, ugh, and it's going to be in the workspace, obviously. I mean, Mars is going through your colleagues, coworkers, employee, employer stories. And um, it's square Jupiter in the ninth house of academics, academic environments, book publishing, foreign lands, and travel. There's some kind of difficult moral ground stance that somebody in the workplace is probably taking. And it may be uh, at odds with what you want to achieve with long distance travel, with things to do with book publishing, foreign countries, um, things to do with journeys abroad, things to do with success in your academic environment. Environment, especially in colleges and universities. And there's a problem with the work with the workhouse. Somebody, someone or something is pushing here Monday and Tuesday in a way that you're not happy with. Stand your high ground. You know, you're our, you are Jupiter. Um, they're flailing at you from neutral dignity in the sign of Aquarius. Likely uh, this too will pass, but Monday and Tuesday looks like it could be a combustion there. Um, now, when we move into 
Wednesday, we have that triple Kazemi, a very rare event with Mercury and Saturn and the sun. Please listen to the video I put out probably uh, two days before this video, all signs. Go to my channel, find it, look at for it. Maybe I'll put a link in the description box, but go watch it and understand how your so not, that very rare Kazemi will impact you based on your sign. Then at the end of the week, let's say Thursday through Sunday, we begin to feel the import of the March 1st conjunction. I mean, sextile between the sun and Jupiter. Now, because I like to teach synodic cycles, I'm going to repeat the same story. You had an event last April 11th when the sun and Jupiter co-joined in your eighth house of chunky money, shared monies with a partner, um, retirement money, investment money, banking, loans, and mortgages. Business, I mean, spousal shared resources, something reset here for you, inheritance monies reset here for you last April, Jupiter, sun, things, fiery godfather, goodness was unfolding in this eighth house over the course of the last year. <clears throat> this goodness finishes its cycle on May the 28th when the sun conjoins Jupiter in Taurus, right? Go back in time, write these down, grab a pen or Pause this and, and listen slowly. April of 2011, April of 1999, March of 1987, March of 1975. These are other times that the fairy godfather button was turned on in your eighth house of chunky money. Now, because there's also other things here like magic, mystery, occult, some uh, I talk to dead people, you may have also been involved in those matters in a very fortunate way on these synodic cycle Sun Jupiter resets. But this time we have Chiron here, which we haven't had, you know, since like, I don't know, brain come online 50 years ago. So this has got the Chironic inflection. What have you been trying to heal that feels wounded about that chunky money shared resources part of your sky, including the word inheritances, including the money you share with your spouse or main squeeze partner? What are you trying to come to terms with there? Okay. And heal there. And now we come into this very lucky Thursday through Sunday. <clears throat> finish line of the sun flowing to Jupiter. The sun is saying here, spouse, business partner, audience and marketplace, seventh house, flows in a lucky way to Jupiter in your ninth house. This can be very positive development showing up Thursday through the weekend in academic settings, foreign travel settings, uh, spiritual philosophy and ideals, as well as the way those things dovetail with legal contracts and agreements and marriage partnerships and significant others in your life, particularly solar figures, which can be father, father figures and financial goodness in a positive way, maybe surprising with Uranus in your ninth house as the last hurrah of the reset of your chunky money stories. Hey Libra, this is a week to look at. Wow. Lots of big stuff going on. We're going to start with a difficult Monday, Tuesday, where we see the square, I mean, the square between Mars and Jupiter. Um, like a, hor a moral thunder, self-righteous battle of some kind with a child, perhaps with a lover or romantic partner. These are Mars fifth house people. This is a sharp sword and it doesn't involve difficult conversations or difficult actions and moral righteousness with those children, with those lovers and romantic partners as it applies to secrets, Jupiter in the eighth house, um, shocking secrets maybe uh, that are larger than anyone wanted to talk about or money that you share with a, with your children or romantic partners and some kind of holy, mor holy mor moral righteous disagreements or, or challenges, right? Now, if it's not personable like that and it's not people, what is this problem you're having in your entrepreneurial creative life that's at odds in a very sharp and edgy way with what you want to get going or happening in your investments, your long range money and your financial goodness of your money makes money, chunky money house. Now, if you're, 
if you're, well, I'm not going to go too deep onto this. Okay. So then we want to move into the Wednesday. We have a Kazemi, triple Kazemi, highly rare event because of Saturn co-present in the Kazemi with uh, being born again with Mercury. Both are being born again as new planets. One is a morning star, one is an evening star. And so that week of the Wednesday, this Wednesday coming, I've got a video out on that already. Go listen for your sign so they don't have to repeat that content. On Thursday through to Sunday, the energy is all about the grand finish line, which is very lucky, fairy godfather vibe of a reset button in your life that happened last April in Aries. With is This is your significant business partners, marriage partners, and audience client marketplace. The outreach of your efforts from your 10th house of career. Now you've got a chironic wound here, just reminding you of that. And so it's also about feeling wounded in marriage, feeling wounded or, you know, somehow something not being right with your business partners or the way you're reaching out to that marketplace and audience. And so there's this wound that's here and that's okay. That's coming to a healing anyway. And I got a whole video on that because of the conjunction of the North Node here last week. But this energy is coming into a longer story, right? I want you to go, like, I did this in the beginning, but I'm going to, like, get a pen, get a paper, write this down. Go back to April of 2023, then go back to April of 2011, and April of 1999, and March of 1987, and March of 1975. Those are times that Jupiter, Sun co-joined in Aries, and for one year afterward, there was some kind of attempt to give you a blessing, a fairy godfather effect in the place of the seventh house, the house that's opposite you, other people that you see in your life. Technically, because of Chiron here, this is a more difficult version where you've been feeling maybe somewhat wounded. And this is going to be the finish line that happens on Thursday through Sunday, where the sun is now sextiling Jupiter, because don't forget, the sun will conjunct Jupiter at the end of May and end the story of this reset that happened here. Libra, the story looks like a combination of matters to do with work and health and eighth house monies. Um, it's an interesting place as well regarding pets and regarding tenancies and rentals. And tenancies, pets, rentals, and work and health matters. Maybe very much on your radar in a lucky positive way, coming through the sky all the way from Thursday to, through Sunday, though most acute on March the 1st, which is a, a Friday or a Saturday. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, but you still feel it through to Sunday. Solar figures in the sixth house can be bosses, especially with Saturn there. And an eighth house is like, hey, let me give you a chunk of money. But because there's also the activation of the seventh house, that's legal agreements. So some of you may be looking at a new terms of service, a new hiring contract, new legal agreements that affect you positively in a financial way, for example, in the work environment. But hey, may also with series here be a change of residence coming into your awareness for rental property and or buying a property or selling a property. All those matters are very auspicious uh, on Friday through to Sunday. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign. Now, the week starts a little bit gnarly on a Monday, Tuesday with a square between Mars and the planet Jupiter. Watch for some a holy rolling moral righteous thunder in your house of home and real estate, but people you're living with in particular in your domestic environment, firing up their sword and squaring the house of the relationship itself or relationships in general. There may be relationship combustion going on with people you live with starting on Monday and Tuesday, but not to worry, it will wind down, okay? It will come to a close very quickly and by Wednesday, you're moving into another energy. Oh, and by the way, that could be like you, somebody wants to move, change the home, and there's tension with you and another in a relationship around a change of home. Now, um, going back to Wednesday, there's a Kazemi, very rare, triple Kazemi, Sun, Mercury, Saturn. I've done a video on that. It's probably out already two days before you're seeing this. Go check my, my channel website homepage and go watch it. Alrighty. It's too important not to, so rare, but we're not going to cover that today. <clears throat> we're going to not repeat that stuff in this video. Rather, looking at the excitement of the sun, Jupiter, God, fairy godfather archetype, moving into some sweet flow Thursday through Sunday in your chart.
This energy really is about a longer story, but the sun and the sun and Jupiter look like money luck, uh, romantic luck, luck with a child, good things happening with your creativity, good things happening with reaching an audience with your creativity or marketplace. Good thing for really great for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial charts. But before we delineate this, can we go back a minute, please, and go back in time? This is really the last finish line act of sun in relationship to a conjunction with Jupiter, April of 2023, that is coming to the close in a lucky way right now, an easy, grace-filled way. What are you resetting in your work house? Mm -hmm. It also is, of course, pets. It's also rentals. It's health and work. Basically, more accurately, it's the work and job house. So go back in time to work and job stories, April of 2011, April of 1999, March of 1987, March of 1975, and see what lucky fairy godfathers be things befell you in the health and work part of your story, pets and rentals as well. This is a story that is now finishing up this week, right? This Friday through Sunday. And the final finish line of the story, of course, is the end of May when the sun and Jupiter create a new story for you in the house of marriage. <laughs> now, this resets button here, this weekend, Thursday through Sunday, can really invite you to connect more deeply to what brings you joy and enjoyment and, and creativity and what you want to give birth to in relationship to your marketplace audience clients, but also your significant business and love partners. This can look like often still like, you know, some like real glow up in that relationship and it can also maybe pick up a little bit of energy from the fifth house of creative inspiration uh, with something you want to put into the marketplace. And so look for your, your muse to be really a light or really revved up, especially with um, the Neptune um, Mercury combination, which is great for reverie and creativity and divine downloads coming through your sky in high imagination, high artistic ability, really amplified in a dreamy way. And you might find that therefore Thursday, through Sunday, there's something very sweet coming through in your artistic and creative mat matters. You could even honestly get a contract if you're an artist, like someone wants to sign you up because of Juno in the House of Good Spirit. So if you're creative and artistic, honestly, this is amazeballs for you. Enjoy the ride, guys. This is the end point of a reset in your work and health stuff that doesn't come back again until 2035. Hey, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. You've got a synodic reset. No, we're starting with the hard stuff. I forgot. Hey, Sag, we're starting with Monday, Tuesday. Watch out for falling hor holy, moral, righteous anger as you have a conflict maybe coming into a brew with an, uh, a, a neighbor, a younger sibling, um, somebody in your local environment, somebody who is in an educational setting around you, squaring off with Jupiter Monday and Tuesday in the work environment. But also if it's not about people, maybe there's conflict and travel and work situations that are gnarly Monday and Tuesday, or between educational situations and work, or between um, matters to do with rentals and, and pets and things to do with travel and, and local neighbors and neighborhood. Okay, just watch, watch the sky. It's a little bit aggressive on Monday and Tuesday. But then on Wednesday, the triple Kazemi, please watch my video on that rare, rare event that's happening in your fourth house of home and land and real estate is really, really significant for you. On the end of the week, that's what I really want to talk about. This is the fairy godfather with luck, expansion and goodness and happiness coming into a story of ripening. We're talking about a synodic cycle that started last April when Jupiter and the sun co-joined together, co-joined together in your fifth house of creativity, romance, sexuality, things maybe to do with your entrepreneurial and self-directed uh, business endeavors, and in simply joy, pleasure, enjoyment, play, fun, inspiration, and enthusiasm. This cycle was trying to reboot this part of your chart last April. And it's done this before, right? It's good for generating also pregnancies and, and birthing babies and stuff and having romance, romance. It tried to reboot you in April of 23, but it's done this reboot that lasts a year as well. Fairy Godfather reboot, reset, April of 2011, April of 1999, March of 1987, 
March of 1975. So go back to those dates and add a year, right? Spring to spring. What was going on in that fifth house? Because it's back, but it's different, you see. The reset in April of 23 involves Chiron here, says 2018-19. Where is the sexual wound? Where is a romantic wound? Where is the wound with one of your children? Where is the wound with, yeah, like falling out with a child? Where is the wound with your um, just romance life, your play, your fun, your creativity, your pleasure? your enjoyment of life. Where's this wound been plaguing you since 2018-19? Now, you know, it's trying to heal, especially this year with the February North Node conjunction. And Jupiter's working with it, right? Jupiter's sun. And here we have the last sextile, like the waning sextile, as, as, as Saturn, as Jupiter, sorry, as a sun, Thursday through Sunday, you'll feel the sun, right, here, moving into a flow state towards Jupiter in your sixth house. So this is going to look maybe like a glorious opportunity for a lucky rental property or pet opportunity connected to your home or something going on this weekend to do with some positive domestic private life, home life developments that also may connect you to work and career matters, right? Juno up here in a wedge to Jupiter. So some of you may find yourself in a career space or announcing a wedding. Yes. Um, maybe also things to do with debts and debt relief through home and career matters coming into your story Thursday through Friday. It's really the peripheral last energy of what was really trying to be, where is your joy last April? What is bringing you authentic enjoyment of life, not just temporary and transient pleasures? That was activated last April and it is finishing up at the end of May. <clears throat> and that's when Jupiter will co-join with uh, the sun in your sixth house of health and work. And that will be your new story, right? For the next year after. All right, Cappies. Ah, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. It is a narrative here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Guys, that really helps the channel grow. So here we have the beginning of the week, Monday, Tuesday kind of vibe. Watch out because, you know, Jupiter square Saturn is a difficult energy in the sky. And Jupiter is sitting in your fifth house of children, squaring Saturn. I mean, squaring Mars. I say Saturn, I call it Mars in your house of speech. So you could have a difficult conversation with a child or a lover, romantic partner. Okay, that's an example. Um, but also... Money stories, right? Mars is self-righteous, moral, uh, holy, hol holy ground, uh, righteousness in the not just the speech house, but also in the finance house. Money that you make and earn, or things you want to buy or own or possess, and your values. And maybe you've got a value that's been transgressed by a child, or a financial difficulty with a child, or financial um, problem with a child. And you got like your righteous speech on Monday and Tuesday, you're trying to fix the story or your lover. If you have not like a long-term committed, but like a romantic dating partner, and you're like really having a moment there with that person who feels that they are right and righteous because they're Jupiter. Um, you could have some kind of like difficulty as a general principle between your earnings and your entrepreneurial uh, or creative projects, but it's just a Monday, Tuesday story. It will smooth out. Wednesday, we have Saturn, Sun, and Mercury in a triple Kazemi, it's a very important reset button for you. It happens in your third house. It has to do with siblings and travel and and writing and, and online world stuff. And that reset button is extremely rare. So please listen to my new All Signs video that just came out delineating that for each sign. At the same time, you can say um, the be best story of the week, of course, is the save the best for last Thursday through Sunday. And that's the sun sextile Jupiter. Well, it may seem like nothing. It's actually everything. Fairy Godfather's story is at the finish line of something that began in April of 23 in your Aries story. That's your fourth house of home, land, and property. So go back to April of 23. There was a synodic cycle reset button of Jupiter and the sun, very good, fa good father, fairy godfather, um, you know, I don't know what to say, you know, the the good father archetype, the wise father, the godfather, fairy godfather, resetting something in the property, land, home, and real estate part of your sky. You have a wound there ever since 2018 about the home and where you live and what is your true home. And that's been really on your 
case, you know, since 2018-19, this chironic wound, it can also be a childhood wound, dealing with your childhood wounds, uh, mother wounds and all of that. And that's coming to a close anyway, uh, uh, with a February 19th um, <clears throat> synodic, you know, connection of Chiron in the North Node, and you're really closing that chapter of that wound out. And back in April last year, the universe said to you, Capricorns, hey, fairy godfather to the rescue, I'm going to help you with this Chironic wound, and you're going to find a home, or I'm going to make you feel better about the word home, and bring you some luck in the terms homeland, property, real estate, domicile, domestic, private life. You have had this set reset before. Go back to April of 2011, April of 1999, March of 1987, March of 1975, and add a year to each of those events that I just described because those were other times that the Fairy Godfather reset button hit you in your fourth house. However, Chiron was not there. They had a different temperament, but it was still the fourth house. So good luck in all those home, property, land, legacy wealth, inheritance monies as well, things to do with your private life and all of that. Now, this Friday through Sunday, the last sextile is forming between the Sun and Jupiter. The Sun that reset your button here in the fourth house in last April, April 11th, the Sun is moving in a relationship toward Jupiter, right? Sun Jupiter. <clears throat> in a nutshell, let me take a sip. In a nutshell, <clears throat> the story says you may be finding that Thursday through Sunday, something very happy, unexpected, lucky, and fortunate, because we have Uranus, expect the unexpected, occurs in a money luck house. Now, this is the third house of the local environment, like your, you know, the stores and restaurants and the shops around you, your neighbors and neighborhood, and also younger siblings. So sibling. Yes, neighbors, neighborhood, cousins, aunts, and uncles, they can all be in your third house. Something good is happening there. But also, this is a money luck house. So you may win some money. Casino, gaming, speculation, lottery. It can look like a financial gain if you're doing it in relationship to third house, people and things, Friday through Sunday. But what else could it be, right? Because it's going to help heal the chironic wound in your fourth house. It wouldn't be enough money to buy a house, I suppose, <laughs> or to move your house or something like that. Um the fifth house is also romantic and it can involve romantic and leisure travel. It can involve your children. And the third house is communications like emails and phone calls. And there may be some blessed emails or phone calls with lovers, romantic children. I mean, children, romance and lovers coming to your awareness during the time of Friday through Thursday through Sunday, travel, short distance travel, connected to entrepreneurial endeavors as well, can be lucky breaks coming through the sky. But ultimately, it all tells you that it's trying to finalize the, the sense of you becoming at home in yourself, but maybe in a home. And so look for those lucky turning point breaks coming through your sky Friday through Sunday. Hey Aquarius, I am one of you. We are experiencing this energy on Monday through Monday through Tuesday of a square from Mars to <clears throat> Jupiter. It can be us. We are holy, moral, righteous thunder. We are the one with the loud voice, the sharp sword, and we're thunderously at attacking the stance of some Jupiter person in the fourth house. Somebody in the fourth house wants to be wise and noble and we're, we're ob objecting with it, you know? So it can be a domestic dispute, a domestic tension Monday and Tuesday, a tension with somebody in the fourth house. It doesn't actually have to be somebody in the fourth house living with you, <laughs> although it certainly can be. Um, it can be other kinds of people as well, connected to the themes of land, home and property and real estate, um, like your agent or like your landlord or something. But there's some kind of like moral injustice, moral indignity, righteous thunder going on in your approach to things Monday and Tuesday. As we move forward, though, Wednesday, we have a triple Kazemi, on, and that's really lovely. Uh, it's very rare in your money and earnings house, a big reset button that's extraordinarily unusual for all of us Aquarius is in our finances and earnings. And that's going to be something I've I do dive into. It's a video that's already out as you're hearing this on Monday. So go check it out, please, on my channel. Uh, you'll just see it under the videos. Click the videos button. Uh, but we're going to talk mostly now about the beautiful reset button of the fairy godfather cycle of the sun and Jupiter as they co-joined last April. Okay, last April of 23, April 11th in Aries, right here. Boom. Now, this is your online world. 
And this is your social media world. This is your siblings. This is trips and travel. This is uh, writing projects. This is uh, periodicals, magazines, blogs, the online websites, all that stuff, younger sibling relationships. And you had a chironic wound here activating it since 2018, not even finishing until 2027, I think. But you feel the wound being healed anyway this year because of a North Node conjunction to Chiron in February. It's healing, it's coming to a close, but you're going to find that this is a story that began in April of 23 that's closing out at the end of May. And this Friday through Sunday is a part of it in a lucky way. <clears throat> I'll give you examples from me. I didn't take a certain medical procedure during the pandemic and my country almost for a whole year banned me from trains, planes, and automobiles, not, not to mention, you know, libraries, restaurants, and everything else. So it was very seriously Gestapo-like in my country during COVID if you didn't take a certain medical procedure and that applies to 6 million of us Canadians. <sighs> Travel is the third house. I was limited in my travel, right? That's one of the chironic wounds. I haven't written a decent damn thing now at all, writing in my blog since 2019-20. It's been dead as a door now. So I'm not, I'm not just saying it's all about me. I want you to understand how literal this stuff can be. So we've been reset by Jupiter last April in the place of the great wound, right? And if I look back at myself, since last last year, last April, I've traveled a lot. I've traveled for the first time out of the country since 2019, for God's sakes, right? So yes, yay, uh, everything is back, right? And I'm writing my newsletter now like a writer instead of bullet points. I'm getting back into the vibe of my writing again as a Cosmic Moonshine newsletter writer. So keep in mind that this is a cycle then that has happened before because what's happening this Friday through Sunday is relevant to what I'm about to tell you. April of 2011, April of 1999, March of 1987, March of 1975. Those were the times that Jupiter Sun co-joined in Aries and reset your third house. In April of 2011, I was hired by Elephant Journal Magazine and that began a career in the kind of thing that has to do with writing and writing projects and stuff like that. Oh, it's also the inception of my blog that year. So April of 11 to 12, I not only did I start my Awakened Dreamer blog, but I also got hired by Elephant Journal. And then later on that cascaded to a bunch of other magazines at, where I was editor, senior editor online, like the Good Men Project magazine and others, Huffington Post. <laughs> so I'm just bringing me as an example because you see you, if you go back in time, Aquarians, you'll see the cycle repeats, right? Where have the blessings been in your third house of travel, writing, communications, websites, blogs, local neighborhoods, neighbors, right? Finding goodness in the neighbor and neighborhood in which you reside. So what happens is that this Thursday through Sunday, the Jupiter sun sextile forms. It's the last gas finish line of luck on a longer story that began last April, where the luck is coming through your finances and your earnings and your voice and your calling and your vocation. These are second house words, your values as it flows to Jupiter in the house of property, home, land, and real estate. Honestly, with Juno up here, some of you may have an opportunity to purchase or sell a home. This is about contractual agreements, right? And vows, including a financial agreement partnering, you partner with a bank with a mortgage, <laughs> but also things to do with partnership, money that belongs to you and another being highlighted on Thursday through Sunday in a very positive way that expands your home in a surprising and lucky way, but all goes back at the end of the day to value the ad in your third house, right? Third house of the online space, third house of the travel, third house of the writing, third house of the, the social media stuff. Whatever happens on the flanking parts of your earnings and your home and land and property suddenly looks really good on you to finish strong here. Because on May the 28th, that story is done and Jupiter, fairy godfather, sun conjunction happens in your fourth house of land, home, property, real estate, right? So that's your new yay you cycle and starting in May of this year, May 28th out of year. Already best and always best and sometimes last but never least is the Pisces sun, moon and rising sign folk. Hey, all right. So the Monday, Tuesday beginning of this week is a bit difficult because of the square between Mars and Jupiter and that Mars Jupiter square, which is a part of a whole other synodic cycle, by the way, but I don't have time to go into that one today. That square is going to address something on Monday and Tuesday that can be about some difficulty regarding foreign people, foreign lands and foreign shores. All right. 
or situations where you self-sabotage and undo yourself or things to do with your bed pleasures and your sex life, okay? Mars is there and he is squaring Jupiter in your third house. There can be some holy, moral, justified, righteous thunder going on here uh, towards matters of siblings, matters of travel, matters of the online world, matters of your neighbors and neighborhood. There's a conflict here. Let me know what happens. I'd like to hear how that plays out for you. As we move into Wednesday, there's a triple conjunction, Kazemi, reset button in the house of your Piscean identity. All right. It's all about you. You are having a big reset of both death of Saturn, death of Mercury, and rebirth of those planets in the house of you. So definitely listen to my All Signs video that came out a couple of days ago on that. Go find it on my channel. It's going to be an important one for you guys to hear. At the same time, the other thing I want to mention, I should have said at the beginning of the video that, by the way, <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll splice it. My All Signs videos were, were dumped yesterday on Sunday. Um, I'm, this is a vi Monday video, but I'm recording on Friday. Um, so then we move on to Thursday through Sunday, where there's a fairy godfather uh, sextile going on in the sky. But it's all part of a larger beginning. And so let's talk about it in bit by bit st stories, okay? The bigger story... Okay, the bigger story is go back to April of last year, April 11th, and Chiron, where Chiron says, and there was a sun conjunction with Jupiter. So Jupiter's being reborn again here in your second house of earnings, money, and resources. And the whole point of it is Jupiter saying, I'm here to make you more prosperous and bountiful in your earnings, resources, and possessions. How can I help? And this is what's coming to a close on May 28th when Jupiter resets himself in your third house of other matters, right? Go read about it siblings and stuff and travel and learning and teaching. But this reset that started last April, it's not the first time you've had it. You've had this April type reset, April of 2011, April of 1999, March of 1987, March of 1975. And in each of these springs, you add a year and you go, Jupiter is trying to bless you in your financial part of your sky. Also to do with your voice and your calling, your face, you know, things to do with the throat. This is a part of the meaning of the second house. You've been chironically wounded here. You might not like your, your face, your jaw, your teeth. You might have been having a voice problem since 2018, 19, but certainly a lot of you Pisces would experience this as an earnings and values and self-worth issue. This started to really dig into you in 2018, 19 and been plaguing you <laughs> on February the 19th behind us. We saw the North Node conjunct Saturn. Also March the 5th is the mean node. This is in the process of healing. So stay tuned for that. But what I would like to really point out is that that can only look like at the end of the day, by the end of May, you'll look back on that year and go, I, I, things got better in my money story. That's what you're going to end up saying to yourself, hopefully. Now, this Thursday through Sunday, the energy is the sun flowing to Jupiter. Okay. Sun is in the house of you. You are becoming more focus, more vital, more uh, focused on purpose and career, more ad identified with your true soul. You're flowing to Jupiter in the third house of neighbors, neighborhoods, siblings, younger, aunts, uncles, cousins, maybe. Things to do with travel and education. There could be an educational opportunity or a travel opportunity becoming available in a lucky and unexpected way Thursday through Sunday, or a connection to a neighbor or sibling Thursday through Sunday, or a connection to um, a writing project or something going on in the social media online world, Thursday, emails, phone calls as well, lucky positive emails and phone calls coming through the chart Thursday through Sunday that all take you back home to your earnings, self-worth and possessions. This is where you land at the end of the day from whatever is going on Thursday through Sunday, even if it's about you and the third house stuff. At the end of the day, it supports you healing the chironic wound in the house of your earnings and possessions, your voice and your vocation and your calling. You know, the third house is the local hood, right? So your restaurants, your pubs, your bars, your, your movie theaters, and it may look like a lucky or positive interaction in any of those environments involving a lot of inspiring communication and dreamy talks that really help you move towards a whole wholeness wholeness in your chironic challenges regarding your appearance, your dietary style. <laughs> These are chiron wounds in the second, your, um, your voice, and of course your earnings and your money. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you made it this far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh no, I've got like mascara glop. <gasps> That's because I put drops in my eyes. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to try me out. Um, Chiron, the key to purpose and synastry. Are you my person? Relationship astrology <laughs> is coming out. Um, I mean, you get them for free, those two courses. So check them out. When you join my Patreon community, that's my gift to you. It's an ethical bribe. It's only $5 to join Patreon for the cheapest tier a month. You can quit anytime. Uh, you get a Zoom call with me a month for the cheap tier. <laughs> you get um, early access ad free content. All this content is before the public and it's without ads. And you also can upgrade anytime to other tiers should you prefer that. So check it out. Join my Patreon. It's just an ethical bribe. Get those courses and leave. And I'm not uh, upset at all. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. Ciao, ciao. I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I think next video is my preview of the eclipse coming up on March the 25th. And it's a Libra South Node eclipse. And we'll be talking about that in a, in a preview video pretty, pretty quickly after this video. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget, my All Signs videos came out on Sunday. Go check them out. Uh, go listen for your sun, moon, and rising. Bye-bye, everyone. All Signs March videos.